All right, uh, there's Carson Wentz uh, without his boot talking about not one, but two spraying ankles. I mean, I, I, it's this is rare. I just can't remember a guy when you say which ankle and the answer is both. But the Colts are really dealing with this situation. His first year, Carson Wentz, his first year in Indianapolis and already two games in the team is challenged at the quarterback spot. Now, what do we make of this? We can find out. I tell you, who can tell us everything we need to know. Stephen Holder of The Athletic, senior writer of The Athletic, uh, representing Miami and Indianapolis <laughs> all at once. So I like that. Hey, Stephen, I, I got to tell you, man, first of all, welcome to the show. Good to see you and glad to have you on here dropping some knowledge. But I gotta it's tell good you, to man, be here with your brothers, I by the back. way. Thank you. I, I went you, back. Man. I looked at Carson Wentz's 2017 season and I felt like I was going back 40 or 50 years of NFL history. <laughs> Whatever happened to the guy? 33 touchdown passes, seven interceptions, MVP candidate, got hurt before the playoffs. They won a Super Bowl without him, but he was seen as a franchise pillar. And now he's a guy telling you about two sprained ankles. What happened? <laughs> Life comes at you fast, doesn't it? And I think we have seen that with Carson Wentz. You know, he went from, as you said, that guy in 2017, I thought, to last year being basically the the guy who, who took the blame or a lot of the blame for a lot that went wrong in Philadelphia. I don't know that I've seen a guy who was considered a, a franchise quarterback uh, both – publicly committing to him and financially committing to him going from that to out the door in such a short period of time. I mean, it's, it was really a unique situation that you're not going to see very often in the NFL. I mean, even in today's day and age where commitments are fleeting and quarterbacks are on short leashes, even under today's circumstances, it, it was definitely uh, something to behold. But to your question, I think he needed a new start. There's no question he needed a new start. The, the Eagles needed that, and Carson Wentz needed that. However, now that has been short-circuited, as you said, after two games here. Uh, so he's got two bum ankles. The right one is worse than the left. But uh, he's got a lot of work to do if he's going to be able to play this Sunday. You know what, Stephen? Uh, I'll admit it. You know, I like a little gossip every now and then. I like whisper campaigns. I like uh, trashy TV. I'll tell you, I watch The Real Housewives of Potomac. Uh, just like anybody else. All right. So I like some of the craziness and there's plenty of craziness surrounding Carson Wentz when he left Philadelphia. I heard all kinds of stuff about what kind of guy he was or what kind of guy he wasn't. How about in Indianapolis? Is he is he a leader in that locker room or do you hear some of the same things that, that we heard about him in Philadelphia? I think it's a little early to tell, but he I will say this. The, the guys have definitely taken to him. I know one of the first things he did, he did this over the summer before training camp was he had a lot of the offensive players come out to Houston where he, he makes his off season home. They came out there and had, you know, kind of an unofficial retreat. They got some work done on the field. You know, they hit some golf balls. They did a little bit of that, some pool, et cetera. So I, I thought that was a good effort on his part. I, I will say this for Carson Wentz. He is self-aware. Like he knows what people think about him. He may care too much what people think about him, actually, to, to be completely honest. But he definitely is aware of it. And I think that was an example of him trying to get ahead of it. Now, whether that's going to be enough, I don't know. I, at the end of the day, you got to do it between the lines. And if you're doing it between the lines, your leadership off the field tends to be less of a factor. I think that's what boils, that's what this boils down to. You know, had he still been that guy he was in 2017, maybe people weren't sort of rubbed the wrong way uh, when it comes to his leadership style in Philadelphia. But you have a situation where maybe they lost confidence in you as a leader, and then they also lost confidence in you as a player, and you can't have both. You can't battle on both of those fronts. I read where the Colts uh, have invested more money in their O-line than all but one team in the NFL, but two games in, 21 quarterback hits, 26 QB pressures. Certainly doesn't help playing the Rams and Aaron Donald like they did last week. And, and it's funny, you said life comes at you fast. You get at life comes at you fast in Philadelphia. We just finished talking about Ben mm -hmm. Simmons. 
his fall from grace. But yeah. I do want to ask, though, much like in Philadelphia, and we talked a lot about this, Carson Wentz's decline was not all Carson Wentz's fault. Uh, the thinking was that going and, you know, reuniting with Frank Reich would, uh, would reinvigorate him uh, and, uh, you know, uh, you know, return his career. I'm sorry, just throw yeah. a blank there. So what I want to what I want to know from you, Stephen, is resurrect his career. That's the word I couldn't find for some reason. Resurrect his career. What I want to find what I want to know from you though is what are they doing around him? I pointed out that stat about the hits and the pressures. What are they doing around him uh, after two games uh, that they're not doing well enough that they don't need to correct going forward? In addition to him getting healthy. Yeah, there there has been a little bit of dysfunction in the offense, and it, it traces back really to injuries. You know, they have had a number of guys miss pretty much all of training camp in the preseason. Carson Wentz among them, right? The offensive line, a majority of the offensive line missed the entirety of training camp. And so what I've been telling fans in Indianapolis is that, you know, when you talk about training camp and oh, a guy will be back for the season, no big deal. It is a big deal. That's what I think. I really think when you see an offensive line underperforming the way this one has, you talked about the investment. I really think it traces back to they're not ready. They, they weren't ready for the season opener. And, you know, that's not anybody's fault, per se. It's just circumstances are what they are. Look, they've signed Eric Fisher to be their left tackle. This guy's coming off an Achilles tear. He gets all the credit in the world for getting back out there, missing one game after getting hurt in the AFC Championship. Remarkable. But to suggest that he's in mid-season, mid-season form, of course not. The same thing with Quentin Nelson, who's battling a, a back injury. You know, he fought valiantly against Aaron Donald, so God bless him. But uh, these these guys, you know, so same thing with their their Pro Bowl center, Ryan Kelly. Their, their right tackle's hurt. So, I mean, they got a lot going on. I think it's going to take a while. And then they're dealing with... Also, Carson Wentz trying to get on the same page as these receivers. He missed all of training camp with a foot injury. So, you know, we talk about his injury history. It's not just these ankles. It's also this, this foot injury that kept him out of training camp. So it is a recurring story. Like, I don't like to label guys injury prone, but I get where the label comes from. There's no question about that. Yeah. Um, broadening it out a little bit, Carson Wentz was, ob- was obviously, uh, as we are, well known to be one of the unvaccinated, most high profile unvaccinated players. That was a big topic during training camp. You co authored a piece for the Athletic with Lindsey Jones looking at uh, just how uh, oppressive, if you will, the uh, protocols are for unvaccinated players. Now, the vast majority of NFL players, uh, over, well over 90%, have had at least one shot. So I think you, you guys said it's about 200 or so players who are unvaccinated. I wonder, in, in your research, did you find that, like Denzel Perriman of the Raiders, did you find that players are being worn down and beaten into submission, if you will, and coming around to getting vaccinated so to avoid having a social distance, having to test early and every day, uh, having to you know go through all the different uh, steps that vaccinated players do not being ostracized being outcast as Denzel Perryman said like are, are those holdouts coming around just through exhaustion or are they dug in and we're just not going to get the league completely vaccinated or close to it there's no question that the protocol have had an impact now the question going forward is going to be what about these last holdouts uh, are they going to be influenced? Because they've been dealing with this now for, what, training camps opened in the last week of July. So these guys have had enough time to understand what they're dealing with and to, to know what this is going to be like. And so I, I think what you saw is between the time players reported for camp and maybe the end of the preseason, roughly, you saw a big increase in the numbers in that span and I think that's where the protocols really hit home for players. Like, oh, I got to do this every day and I got to eat outside in a tent. You know, like that's what they were dealing with in some cases in training camp. You know, obviously they're back at their facilities, so the, the logistics are a little better. But it's no question. It is really um, – it, it cramps your lifestyle. There's no question about it. So, again, I think a lot of players did react to the protocols and get vaccinated I would say prior to the regular season, I know there were quite a few Colts players, for example, who would miss a practice 
uh, on a random day and it turns out they were getting their second shot. So they needed to kind of lay down a little mm-hmm. bit. I was like, all right, that's, that's a good reason to yeah. miss practice. Now that you're into the Another- season. Yeah. But, but now that we're into the season, I think most players have made that decision who are going to make that decision. I think they made that decision already. I think these guys, yeah. I mean, for better or worse, they are definitely headstrong. I'll give them that. Uh, Not for the right reason, but they're definitely headstrong. Yeah. And on the worst side, another high-profile unvaccinated quarterback, Cam Newton, probably will remain unemployed longer than he should because, as you pointed out in the article, teams are going to be reluctant to sign a quarterback on short notice that has to go through a a period of being, uh, you know, indoctrinated into the team, has to be away from the team as they, if they're unvaccinated. Hey, Stephen Holder, you do fantastic work with the athletic man. It's so good to see you, bro. It's been a long time, been too long. Let's not be a stranger. Make sure you come back uh, a little, uh, come back soon. Let's not, uh, let's not be too long before your next visit to brother from another. All right, let's do it. No question. Appreciate you, brothers.